What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is a last minute video. I was not going to make a video on this golf cart here, but decided to um, just, I guess, for some extra content or whatever. This yellow golf cart is an easy go PDS. This belongs to uh, the youth pastor at the church we attend. And we're going to install these big battery Raptors in there. These are 36 volt batteries. And the batteries that came out of this golf cart are completely shot. And that's them right there. Now these are the big battery Raptor 36 volt batteries. I think they charge up to around like 40, 41, 42 volts, something like that. The battery tray isn't bad looking. It's got some surface rust on there. And that's basically just from the acid, you know, over time making its way on the batteries. So we're gonna install these right here batteries in that today. So the first thing, if you're thinking, is what kind of tires is he running? These are street tires, 205 60 14s. And I will tell you, rolling it on and off the trailer was very simple because there's not much rolling resistance with these street tires. And well, you know, it's just a car pattern tire. So not a bad tire there. These tires are measuring between 23 and 24 inches tall got about six inches a little more six inches of contact there so these should be quiet and ride pretty good this does have the jake's spindle lift on there so my plan is to come in here i need to remove those two small tabs there in the middle that holds the stock lead acid batteries down then i'm gonna go ahead and maybe have to clearance that center section just a little bit these batteries are about three eighths of an inch too wide for that. So I think a flap disc will take care of that. I'm gonna try to place both batteries along the back uh, battery bracket. We'll leave this front one here open in case they have any kind of, um, you know, storage that they need. They can have that there. And uh, we might have to put a DC to DC converter in here because he has lights on it as well. So with that being said, um, I don't have an easy go PDS, so I wanted to maybe just uh, bring you along today for this right here quick install. You know, the hard part was just about done was pulling those out of there. Those are not light at all, but we're going to get started here and uh, start working so we can deliver it back to them. able to fit both of them into the back portion of that tray uh, just by doing a little grinding here in the center divider and the back tab as, as well just a little bit not much they both fit in there very nice real snug they're not coming out very easily at all um, just went ahead and cleaned them off now we got this all of the storage up here added to the golf cart and two of these or more amp hours than six six volt batteries. So longer runtime as well. We probably saved, I don't know, about 200 pounds so far just by installing these two. Next, what I'm gonna do is install the distribution block here. And I'm gonna put it right in front of the controller cover down in this little area down here. All right, so I went ahead and placed the distribution block down here. That's a pretty good spot. This one cable here that's going through from the ITS, which is in the floor here, um, letting the controller know how fast to spin the motor. So that wire goes in there. This is gonna be our negative wire. This one's gonna be our positive wire. And look at this positive wire here going to the charger port. I'm so glad I took the tape off of here. I was gonna go ahead and extend it 
and hook it up down here. But check out what it looks like. I would say that the OEM charger was definitely building some heat into this thing right here. And that's a fire hazard right there. That's not even lithium. That's the old school lead technology. So I'm probably going to take a part of this right here as well because it just has this black tape on there. And uh, I'm probably going to you know, put a butt connector on it, maybe a heat shrink butt connector, maybe tape it back up. We'll see. Uh, definitely want to take care of that. Wasn't anything uh, detrimental on that uh, charge of ground wire. Just a little uh, cut into the insulation part there. I'll put some black tape back on that. But we're going to extend this white wire down to the distribution block next. So we can uh, charge it from the uh, charging port over here. So I went in here. Uh, extended the wires. I'll put some new connectors on there. I think it looks a little bit better. I'm going to come in here next and just take care of these heat shrink connectors. Bring the seat down properly. Oh yeah, looks a lot better. Now, a lot of this stuff isn't needed when you uh, lithium swap a golf cart. I'm um, just trying to pretty up this install here. Make it look as best as I can for him. Put some wire loom on here. I like to tape my ends so the wires can't come out to wire loom. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward install here. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take my flap disc and clean up my negative portion a little bit before we put it on. So we can get the best connection possible on the bus bar. That looks a lot better. Not sure how much of that y'all can see, but shiny copper there. Much better than having any kind of dirt on there. And we got some covers to go on top of this right here. So uh, if anything falls in there, it won't shorten out. Then we're going to bolt it down. And then we need to worry about our low voltage side of the system. All right, guys, the batteries are in. The golf cart's working. The last thing we need to do is install the puck converter here so we can power the lights on and off. Now the key switch that he uses for the dash and the golf cart is the two position switch. So the first position is the golf cart on and off. The second position is your 12 volt lighting and accessories, okay? The way he had it ran to begin with, he had a positive and negative wire jumping two batteries in series to get 12 volts. You know we're not gonna do that here on this channel. And it, with uh, lithium batteries, you can't do that anyway. So. We have a puck converter. This is 12, this is 36 volt input, 12 volt output. And I have a 36 volt relay, okay? The reason I like to use relays, if y'all ever watched this channel or not, or if this is brand new to you, these puck converters, they convert 36 volts down to 12 volts. And even when the golf cart is off, these will still convert 36 to 12 volts. So if you can hook your multimeter up to the output of these wires here with nothing hooked up, you're gonna have 12 volts of power. So that means that this right here, little puck converter, is converting 36 volts down to 12 volts at all times. We don't want that, okay? Because over time, this will drain these batteries here. And when you drain the batteries, they gotta to go to get on the golf cart and the golf cart's not gonna run. They're gonna think, oh no, something's wrong with the batteries. Why are they dead for? Well, it's because the puck converter, uh, it will uh, drain the batteries over time. So that's why we're going to install a 36 volt relay on this golf cart here. And the reason it's 36 is, well, the batteries are 36 volts. So the key switch will turn the relay on and off. And once the relay is off, you won't have any continuity between 87 and 30, which sends power to the puck converter from the distribution block. When the golf cart is in the on position, you will have continuity between 30 and 87, and then the putt converter will be on and he can turn his headlights on. So that's exactly why we use these relays here on the golf carts. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything wired up and show you exactly how to wire it again. If you want to find a video on just wiring a relay to the ignition switch, I have one of those on the channel already, and maybe I'll place it at the end of this video or up above. Okay, I'm gonna try to simplify things real quick in a timely matter. Your relay here, it doesn't matter if it's 12 volt, 24 volt, 36, 48, 60, 72, it does not matter. What that does is that's what it takes to energize the coil. 
Your coil is 86 and 85. In this case, 86 is yellow, 85 is white. It does not matter if you apply power or ground to either side, the coil will still energize. The only difference it makes in the relays here is like on this golf cart, it's a 36 volt, so we put a 36 volt relay on it, okay? Now your main legs are this red wire, this middle wire, and this black wire. Now, I went ahead and removed the middle wire because we're not gonna use it in today's video. The middle wire is 87A, pin 87A, and this black wire is pin 30, and this red wire is pin 87. So how a relay works, pin 30, which is black, pin 87A will have continuity when there's no power applied to either one of these wires. So they have continuity right now. That's when I, why I went ahead and removed it since we're not using it. Pin 87 will only have continuity between pin 87 and pin 30, which is the black wire, once these wires here are energized and the, and the uh, coil on the inside of the relay is energized. So basically what that means is I'm gonna run one side of the relay to ground, the other side of the relay is gonna go to the key switch input, and by doing so, once I run this right here black wire to the 36 volt input, it does not matter color here, that is just a, a color to separate the pins here on a relay. So we're gonna run this right here to power, 36 volt input, and this one will not have 36 volts input to the puck converter until we energize these two wires here. It's very simple to understand, guys. Now, if you've never really worked with relays before, I can understand why we're adding this right here. This is a switch, that's all it is, but we're using the key switch on the dash to turn it on and off. So the puck converter itself will turn it on and off with the key switch. Now, now we couldn't just take the puck converter and run it to the sw key switch because the key switch isn't strong enough to run all of the amperage through that. So that's where the relay comes into play. It's a 30 amp relay. So very easy to understand. If you guys still do not understand this, just leave it down in the comments below. I need to make a separate video just on relays, and maybe I'll do that as well. You can do multiple things with these. You can turn things on and off with key switches. You can turn things on when the carts are off. You can turn things off when the carts are on. You can change polarities from positive to negative. You can do a lot of different things with relays, and they're actually a lot of fun once you get to understand them. So in this case here, puck converter, I'm gonna take this right here to ground. My input is going to the relay. This is gonna be positive in our put, 36 volt positive input. This is gonna be accessories ground, accessories power. This is probably gonna be ground or power. And one of these is gonna be a key switch. All right guys, when you're checking for power at the key switch, if you have a PDS golf cart, these two white wires here or white and yellow or yellow and white, whatever, those are wires you wanna check. Now, I don't have a key in the ignition right here. I'm gonna place the meter over here. We have no voltage. I'll place the meter to this one. We have no voltage. So you have to place the F and R switch in the run or, or reverse switch. Check power. I have power on this switch right here. None on this switch here. So this middle power uh, wire here, this is gonna be our output. That's what we're gonna attach our DC to DC converter to. If it's in the neutral position, you're not gonna have any power at the key switch, only if you put it in forward or reverse. 